This is your chemistry teacher speaking, Jai Iskandar from SMA2 IPAB. In this meeting, I will discuss about properties and definitions of acid and base. So later on, I will discuss about acid base, starting from definition, theories, reactions, and extra or new concepts. So for Johnson, Dennis, Sharon, and the other students, I will also give you some questions to answer. Properties and definitions of acid and base. So the first one we have table of contents. The first is introduction to acid and base. The second one is the theories of acid and base. Number three is the chemical reactions that involve acid and base. And the last one I will explain about extra or new concepts. So the first one we have introduction. So let's have a short recall. And we also refer acid as a substance that can turn the blue litmus color into red color. While base, we often refer it as a substance that can turn the red litmus into blue color. We also have a pH scale, wherein the pH stands for power of hydrogen scale. So we have a range starting from the lowest point until the highest point, which is 14. And the number 7 means it is neutral. And then another short introduction regarding acid and base is the difference between acid and base on its properties. So we call again acid taste sour, while base tastes bitter. And then acids do not feel slippery, while base feels slippery. Acids has a pH lower than 7, while base has a pH higher than 7. And then acids release hydrogen ions in aqueous solution, while base release hydroxide ions in aqueous solution. For this one, I will explain later. And then acids corrode metal, while base do not corrode metals. Acids react with metals to produce a compound and hydrogen gas, while base do not. And for this one, I will also explain further. And then acids turn litmus paper into red color, while base turn litmus paper into blue color. So those are the short introduction regarding acid and base. So now I will explain about the theories of acid and base. So there are three theories. The first one is the Svante Arrhenius, which is known as the theory of Arrhenius acid and bases. So according to him, acid is a substance that produces hydrogen ion or H plus ion when dissolved in water. For example, is the hydrochloric acid in aqueous form, it will become hydrogen plus. This is hydrogen ion and chlorine ion. Meanwhile, base is a substance that produces hydroxide ion when dissolved in water. So the example is NaOH or sodium hydroxide produces Na plus and OH negative, which is your hydroxide ion. Okay, so that is the theory according to Arrhenius. The next one we have Johannes Bronsted and Thomas Lowry, which is known as the Bronsted Lowry acid and bases. So according to them, acid is a substance that can donate protons, which is your H plus, while base is a substance that can accept protons. So to let you understand better, I have a diagram over here, which is showing the chemical reaction of H2O plus NH3 yields OH negative and NH4 plus. So how do we know whether this is acid or base? So we can take a look at NH3, which is your ammonia. It turns from NH3 yields NH4 plus, which means it accepts protons, so we can call him as base. While H2O is an acid, since it donates proton become OH negative, which is known of your hydroxide ions. And also for this blasted low acid and base theory, we also have a term which is your conjugate acid base pair. So this is your acid and this is your conjugate base pair. And also the same for NH3 and your NH4 plus. They all form an conjugate acid and conjugate base pair. Okay, this is for the first one and the second one. The third theory we have is Gilbert and Lewis, which is known as the Lewis acid and bases theory. So according to him, acid is a substance that accepts electrons, while base is a substance that donates electrons. So in here, I have a diagram to show you a better understanding regarding Lewis acid and bases. So for example, it's A plus and B negative, where A will be acting as a Lewis acid, and B will be acting as a Lewis base. So together, they will form a coordinate covalent bond. Just same like the example over here, you have your CaO and CO2 
your, your calcium carbonate. So right now I have a question. The first one, which substance is acid? So according from here, remember the acid is a substance that accepts electrons. So now, which substance is acid? CO2. Okay, that's correct. So it is CO2. And then now I have also question number B, which is which substance is base? Calcium oxide. Okay, that's correct. So it is CaO. Okay, so those are the theories of acid and base. We have your Sibandel News, Bronstock Lowry, and your Lewis acid and base theory. So after that, now I have a diagram to help you uh, having a better understanding regarding acid and base theory. So recall again our news, H plus in H2O for acid, and the base is hydroxide ion in H2O. Bronstock Lowry, you have your H plus down now for acid. And for base, accepts H plus. And also for Lewis, acid accepts electron pair, while base, E pair, done out. Okay, so now, after I have explained about the theories of acid and base and the introduction regarding the properties of acid and base, I will continue to chemical reaction of acid and base. So the first one is reaction of acid with a reactive metal. So the formula for this is metal plus acid yields salt plus hydrogen gas. So example, Mg, which is a magnesium, plus H2SO4, it will yield the salt, which is MgSO4, or magnesium sulfate, plus hydrogen in the gas form. And then now, the second problem, Cu, which is your couple, plus H3N, yields equals to no reaction. Okay, so can somebody explain to me why is it no reaction? according to this table of reactivity series. Teacher, I think it is because copper is not within the range, hence it cannot react with acid. Okay, so that's correct. And we can see according to this reactivity series. And hence, it is no reaction. And then number two, it is reaction of acid with carbonates. And number three is reaction of acid with bicarbonates. They all have the same pattern, but the difference is only between carbonate and bicarbonate. And take note, carbonate, whenever you see CO3, it means it is carbonate, while HCO3, it is bicarbonate. So the pattern, it is carbonate plus acid yields salt plus water plus CO2. So for example, you have MgCO3 plus H2S, it will yield MgS plus water and your carbon dioxide. Same pattern as your NaHCO3, which is your sodium bicarbonate plus hydrochloric acid, it will yield the NaCl plus water and carbon dioxide. So the pattern for this is clear enough to show you a better understanding. Okay, reaction number four it is reaction of acid with metallic oxide, and number five is reaction of acid with metallic hydroxide. These two also have the same pattern, the difference is just metallic oxide and metallic hydroxide. So the pattern is metallic oxide plus acid yields salt plus water. So example, you have your zinc oxide plus hydrosulfuric acid, it will yield zinc SO4 plus H2O. And then for example, for number 5 is AgOH plus HClO3, it will yield AgClO3, which is your salt, plus water. And then make sure you have balanced the chemical reaction. So for all of the examples that I've teach you for earlier, it is all already in balanced form. And then six is neutralization, neutralization reaction, which is your acid plus, acid plus base yields salt and water. So you have your HCl plus barium hydroxide yields barium chloride and two H2O. So remember to balance it. So I have balanced it for here. It is number two. So the H is already balanced. And the BA also balanced. CL also balanced. And O and H already balanced also. So seven one is the reaction of base with ammonium salt. So the pattern is ammonium salt plus base yields salt plus water plus ammonia gas. So for example, it's CaOH2. 
which is your calcium hydroxide, plus 2 NH4Cl, yields CaCl2 plus 2H2O plus 2NH3 in the form of gas. So once again, remember to follow the pattern and balance the equation. And for balancing the equation, I think you guys have already been taught in the previous chapter regarding how to balance the equations. Okay, those are for number 7. And then the last one, we have reaction of base with a metal salt. So the pattern is salt 1 plus base yields salt 2 plus metallic hydroxide. So in here, I have FeSO4, which is your barium sulfate, plus sodium hydroxide yields your sodium sulfate and your barium hydroxide. Once again, remember to balance the equation and follow the pattern which is your salt 2 is your Na2SO4 and your metal hydroxide is your FeOH2. Okay, so those are regarding the reactions of acid and base. Okay, so now after I have talked about the acids and base reactions, so now let's get into the extra of new concepts. So before we begin, let's have a quick recap. So in here, I have a practice problem regarding identifying acid or base. So the first one has slippery texture. Remember again, it is base, not acid. Two taste sour, remembering. Remember, it is acid. Taste bitter, base. Producers stop and hydrogen gas when reacts with metal, as what I have explained in the chemical reaction before, it is acid. 5. A substance that donates electrons, recall again, according to the Lewis theory, it is base. And then 6. A substance that produces salt, water and ammonia gas when reacts with an ammonium salt is known as base. 7. A substance that produces salt, water and carbon dioxide when reacts with a bicarbonate. Let's have a short recap again, it is known as acid. Okay, so in here, I have a map diagram of acid, bases, and salt. So in here, as you can see, in everyday life, we can use it for neutralization, soil treatment, factory waste, and other everyday life functions. So acid and base and salt are really helpful in our daily life, and also they can be dangerous. So for example, for acid, we have lemon juice and herb. But for base, we have baking soda, detergents, and deodorants. And also in here, we have indicators, which is your new lesson. Well, in indicators, we have your synthetic indicators or natural indicators. For natural indicators, we can use the lichens, or we can use turmeric, rose, or other natural ingredients to determine whether it is acid and base. And synthetic, for example, the most popular is the methyl color or phenolic substance. So by using this indicator, so later on they will turn the color to another specific color, and from that color we can know whether it is acid or base. So in here I also have neutralization, which is a reaction between acid and base, and I have explained that earlier in the acid and base reaction part. Okay, so this is the acid and base and start map diagram, and we also have a quick recap. And the last one, acid and base definitely serve important functions both inside and outside the scientific laboratory. So in everyday life, acid and base play a role in everything from digestion of the foods you eat to the function of the medicine you take and even the cleaning products you use. So remember, acid and base is really important in our daily life. But meanwhile, it is also important to know the difference between acid and bases because mixing the two together can cause a reaction, while mixing vinegar and baking soda can create a great cleaning agent, while but mixing strong acids and bases can create toxic fumes or even explosions. So take note guys that acid and base can be helpful but also can be dangerous. So be careful when handling with acid and base, especially when you're in laboratory or everyday life. Okay, so I think that's all clear and we already have a good lecture regarding chemistry regarding acid and base, starting from its definition, its introduction regarding differences of acid and bases, and I also have teach you regarding the theories, we have your three theories. Remember again, the first one is the Arrhenius theory, second one is your Blonstock theory, 
Number four is your lowest acid and base. And also we have your chemical reaction. We got remember for the pattern and also to balance the equation. And also the last one, we have the new concepts regarding acid and bases and how can they be helpful in our daily life. So I think that's all for our lecture today regarding acid and bases. So let this together again and recall again what I have taught you before to gain you a better complexity, understanding regarding acid and base. That's all, thank you.